Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason. I'm speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. And in this video, I'm continuing my um, countdown on my 100 favorite albums, uh, which I haven't really done for a little while now. Um, but we're on number 60 on my list. Um, and this album is called 21st Century Breakdown by the band Green Day. It came out in 2009, and it's their eighth studio album. So uh, definitely Green Day made quite a bit of albums already at this point. Um, and it's one of their most, really the most popular album probably they've ever come out with. Um, <clears throat> it was number one in the U.S., number one in the U.K. Uh, it's the best chart performance they've ever had. Um, it won the Grammy for Best Rock Album. Uh, yeah, so it's a very, very uh, good album for Green Day. Um, it's the only album I have of theirs on my list. Um, what, I th what I find interesting about Green Day is, like, of course, when I was young in the 90s, um, I used to listen to a rock station called T95, uh, close to Wichita. I live close to Wichita, Kansas, and T95 had all the, like, the alternative rock station. And, um, definitely Green Day was on quite a bit. I listened to quite a bit of Green Day, um, at that time, and I didn't really know Green Day that well, but I know I heard their music, um, all their big songs, and they had a lot of big songs. In fact, later on, when I looked them up and looked at their songs, I was like, oh, wow, I know all these songs, like... Um, Dookie was their big album in the early 90s, had a lot of big hits on it. And I wouldn't say I was a great big fan of Green Day, but I was, you know, well aware of them and liked some of their stuff. You know, they're a decent rock band, I thought, at the time. <clears throat> and uh, it wasn't until um, probably 2004 when they came out with um, American Idiot that they really kind of progressed and kind of became more than just a punk rock alternative band like they were in the 90s. Um, and that was the first album where it's like, they really ch somewhat changed their style a little bit from just a simple just uh, punk rock band to being a little more layered, being more mature, uh, just a lot more music. Um, they're a three-man band. Um, if you know, um, Billy Joe Armstrong is the lead singer and lead guitar player. Uh, Mike Dern is the bass player, and Trey Cool is the drummer. <clears throat> I don't want to say their music was simple in the 90s, but, I mean, there's a lot of good rock riffs for sure. They're really good at... The, at um, in some good guitar riffs in there and Billy Joe Armstrong has some uh, great rock vocals I always enjoyed his vocal work and overall musicianship is pretty good though it's fairly simple straight rock and roll um, I guess when I say when I got to American Idiot in 2004 they changed into this rock opera style that they're kind of well known for now and they added a lot more music to it like a lot more like piano strings uh, they added another guitar player who I guess not official band member but I, a lot of times when I see him in concert footage, there's another guitar player in there, so they're adding a little more guitar work to it. And uh, yeah, so just adding, adding a lot more instrumentation to the to the overall uh, music, which I think gives it a, yeah, just a fuller sound, uh, just layered, which I really enjoy. And they have a little more, I feel like the songs are a little more melodic, they have a little more good melodies in them. They do some kind of rock ballads that they do really well at this point um, that I really enjoy. And, uh, and the writing style is a little mature. If you listen to some of their stuff in the 90s, very immature music, of course, because they were young. Of course, now they're getting older by this point, in 2004, and then this album, 2009. Uh, I don't know how old they are, but they're definitely getting, I think, you know, more mature um, in their writing style. And Billy Joe Armstrong writes all the songs here on this album. Uh, it's a pretty big album. I don't know if it's called a double album, but it's 18 songs, so that's more than the normal length of an album. Uh, maybe not enough to make a double album, but it's a pretty, pretty lengthy album compared to most albums I've listened to. Um, yeah, so this one's a lot like American Idiot, I think, in its uh, musical style. Kind of telling a rock opera. It's kind of almost telling a story, I guess. Um, a lot of songs have, like, Jesus in them. There's some religious, um, uh, like, Jesus Nowhere, I think, is one of their big songs on here. Uh, East Jesus Nowhere. Um and they talk about religion a little bit in some of their songs. I, I just listen to the songs. I don't really pick up on, on exactly all the themes, but it seems like there's a religious theme to them. Uh, there's a government, anti-government theme to them. So it seems like, the, and I think I wanna, what I did research is about like two characters. Uh, and I'm forgetting their names, like Christian and um, something else. I guess those two names appear a lot during the song. So there's somewhat of a flow to each song. It tries to tell a story. 
throughout this uh, this um, album, which is interesting. I guess I don't really pay attention to the story as much. I just pay, pay attention to each song and how much I like it. And, um, you know, it definitely is a good flow to the album, I think, um, from each song. And it's one, like Green Day, uh, they always have great rock riffs. This song is full of great rock um, guitar sounds, uh, riffs and uh, solos and all that is so good that I really enjoy. Um, but then they had um, some more rock opera stuff, some more ballads in there that actually actually nice, really nice um, turn for them. That really works, I think, on this album. And a little more poppy sound, I guess. Instead of just a straight rock sound, there's a little more pop to them, which I think really gives them a more interesting sound than the, than the previous albums. Um, like American Idiot is a pretty good album. It didn't make my top 100. I very I considered it because there's some there's about two or three really good songs on the album, but it didn't quite make it. This one made it because yeah, it has several really good songs on it. Um, that was really kind of kind of surprised by how good I didn't know Green Day could be this good. Um, in fact, I really got to know this album through um, Green Day Rock Band because I used to play Rock Band and Guitar Hero on the Wii, um, and I loved playing. Guitar Hero Rock Band uh, type uh, uh, games, and uh, one of the games I got was Green Day. Even though I wasn't like a huge Green Day fan necessarily, um, I knew they had a lot of good songs that I, would be fun to play, pretend to play on guitar on on the on the game. And so um, the game was a really good game. I really enjoyed that game. Of course, started you know, in the early '90s, got the early stuff in, and then it kind of progressed um, to their later stuff. To like 21st Century Breakdown was like the last album they made. I think before this uh, game came out, so at the end you're playing um, pretty much almost the whole album. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, most of the songs on the album, the 21st Century Breakdown, you play in the game, and that's where I really heard the songs. Where I was like, it's like, wow, this song's great. Like I never heard the song before. Like I didn't know they could, you know, they made this so great. And that's why I really kind of took notice of the album. And so when I listened to it after playing the game, I then listened to it and I was like, wow, this is a really great rock album. Uh, it puts me, Green Day is one of my favorite rock bands from the 90s era. I think they got better in the 2000s here. Um, you know, I think of uh, like Smashing Pumpkins, Oasis, or some of my favorite bands that started out in the 90s. And this is, Green Day is definitely becoming one of my favorite from that era, uh, for sure. Um, like I said, the, really the big song on here was 21 Guns. It was on the radio quite a bit. Very good rock pop song. Uh, went number 22 in the U.S., number 36 in the U.K., number 15 in the Canada. The other um, song that kind of got some airplay was uh, Know Your Enemy, which went number 28 in the U.S., number 21 in the U.K., and number 5 in Canada. So did very well there. So those are kind of the two big singles came off this album. Uh, East Jesus Nowhere, 21st Century Breakdown, Last of the American Girls also were singles, but didn't really do much as far as charting, except for like the rock charts. It did well. That was about it. Um... Yeah, really excellent album, I think, if you like uh, rock music, but I think very layered, uh, lyrically, uh, musically, I think very well done album, if you like rock music. Um, definitely check this out. I think it's Green Day's best album, 21st Century Breakdown. So I'll go to my top three favorite songs on the album. Um, three songs that didn't make it on here, but are really good songs were... 21st Century Breakdown was the beginning, the very first song on the on the album, and it's a really good opener. Um, really gets into the album. Uh, know Your Enemy it was a big uh, kind of a hit on the album. It's a good song. And then Before the Lobotomy is a really good song on this album. Did make my top three. Number three, I'm going probably with somewhat of a surprise. This one really caught me off guard was a song called Last Night on Earth. Um, this is a kind of, I guess I call it a rock ballad. Um, it's a little more slower song for them. Uh, but it's really kind of a nice love song. It's really kind of sweet. The lyrics are really nice. Like, I was kind of surprised. I didn't realize Billy Joe Armstrong was, uh, could write such a kind of nice, sweet song like this. A uh, love, love song. Uh, my favorite lyric from here is, um, My beating heart belongs to you is one of the lyrics that they repeat during the song. And I always thought, wow, that's a really good line. I really enjoyed that lyric. Uh, when I hear it, and I was like, wow, that's a really well-written song, and yeah, just a really nice, uh, it's a really nice song, uh, Last Night on Earth, definitely check that out. Uh, number two is See the Light, uh, towards the end of the album, it's a really good, catchy, uh, pop rock song, I would call it, uh, yeah, just them playing their best, it's great Green Day, you know, Green Day 
when they really do it right, I mean, uh, they do some of the best rock, uh, pop rock type songs. And this is one of the best I've heard from them. Uh, See the Light, number two. And then number one, I went with the obvious one, 21, Gr 21 Guns. Um, such a catchy. And uh, Billy Joe Armstrong's vocals are really good. He hit some high notes in there that I really enjoy. But the chorus is just so catchy. Um, anyways, and it's definitely one that you hear on the radio for a good reason. It's just a fan favorite. And it's definitely one that one of my favorite, not maybe my favorite Green Day song, but it's up there. It's one of my favorite uh, Green Day songs uh, on there. So yeah, so I went 21 Guns, no, number one song on here. Anyway, so yeah, check this out. Check these songs out from here. Uh, feel free to comment. What do you think about this album, 21st Century Breakdown? What do you think about Green Day, the band? Uh, what album's your favorite of theirs, maybe? Uh, really enjoy seeing the comments. Um, and just really thank you for watching this. And just thank you to all the subscribers for um you know supporting this channel and i really enjoy all of you and uh thank you have a good day